Today we're taking a look at the new limited edition Spider-Man 2 PS5 console, which is Sony's first limited edition PS5 console. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. So I'll be unboxing it to show you what you get inside, take a closer look at the new console and controller. Plus I'll quickly run through the setup and see if there's anything different between this and the original PS5 console. So hopefully you'll get a better idea if it's worth getting or not, so that you're ready for the launch of the new Spider-Man 2 game on October the 20th. But before I begin, if you're new to the channel, hope you can support me by subscribing and hitting the bell icon to get notified of my next release. And if you have any questions, then drop them in the comments below. The console arrived in a large brown box and opening this reveals the limited edition Spider-Man 2 official box. Taking a closer look at the packaging, on the front you have Sony on the top left, followed by PS5 in the middle, and then in gold writing you have it highlighting that it supports 8K and 4K at 120Hz together with HDR. Below that you have limited edition PlayStation 5. You then have a picture of the console with the new plates on with Spider-Man Peter Parker having some symbiote on his arm shooting out some black web. There's also Miles Morales next to him and you can see one of his arms is charged up and the other arm is shooting out a white web. With Marvel and Spider-Man 2 below that, then we have the new Spider-Man 2 DualSense controller. Turning the box to the left side, you have the Spider-Man logo with the available capacity at the bottom, which is 825 gigabytes. Looking on the right side of the packaging, you have a picture of the console controller and a picture of the voucher code that you get inside the packaging. On the back, you have a picture of Spider-Man Miles Morales and Spider-Man Peter Parker fighting Venom. The packaging actually looks absolutely stunning. So let's open it up and see what you get inside. Opening up the box, place the box down and gently slide out the packaging which is all white with the PlayStation logo on it. Opening that up, there's a notch on the side allowing you to pull out the box containing all the accessories. Inside that you have a voucher code for the new Spider-Man 2 game which is available from the 20th of October 2023. There's some documentation, a power cable, the stand for the console, a HDMI 2.1 cable, a USB-A to USB Type-C cable for charging the controller, the new Spider-Man 2 Two DualSense controller, then lifting out the remaining packaging and removing the protective coverings, you have the PS5 console. Taking a closer look at the controller, it has a matte black finish with red on the right hand side with a large white Spider-Man logo on the touchpad, with the black symbiote creeping over the red looking so cool. The D-pad buttons on the left are all black with white symbols and the action buttons on the right are white with logos in grey. All the other buttons and triggers are matte black. Coming around the back, this is also so all matte black and looking closely you still have the tiny PlayStation symbols and I think this theme and color combination works so well with it looking really good. Moving on to the console and seriously it looks so good and I really hope my camera can do it the justice it deserves. The middle area of the console is still glossy making it prone to dust and fingerprints then coming around the left you have the PlayStation logo that's etched out in the top left corner. Then towards the bottom right there's a Spider-Man logo surrounded in red with the outer area being black representing Venom with Symbiote creeping towards a logo. The two-tone design looks stunning. Coming around the other side is all black with just a white Spider-Man logo and the contrasting plates look amazing. The stand you get in the packaging is still the same allowing you to have the console standing vertically or sitting horizontally. To have it sitting horizontally take the stand and ensure the screw underneath is not visible then looking at the back of the PlayStation on the lower plate line up the stand with the symbols and slot it into position. Then you can place it into position and to have it vertically take the stand make sure the screw is visible and remove it then then looking underneath the PlayStation, take off the cap in the middle and you can place it in the stand for safekeeping. Then attach the stand into position and attach the screw to secure it and then place it into position. And honestly, it looks great in either position. The buttons and ports on the front are still the same with a power and a jack button together with a USB-C and USB-A port. At the back you have a Kensington locking point followed by two USB ports, a LAN port and one HDMI input together with a power input. So let's get this set up and ready to use to see if there's anything different. Plug in the power input, the HDMI cable and the LAN cable then power it on via the power button at the front. On boot up the LED still light up, the colours are still the same with it being blue and once it starts up it goes white which is the same as before. Next connect up the controller with the type C cable you get in the packaging and the other end gets plugged into the console. Then
then press the PS logo and the console will pick up the new controller. Now you can remove the cable or leave it plugged in to charge the controller. Let me quickly run through the setup, select your language, turn off the screen reader if you don't want it, adjust the display area, adjust the HDR settings and if there was a disc with the console you can insert it now to install. We'll continue without the disc as I've only got a voucher code for the Spider-Man 2 game. Power options for rest mode, I'll go for low power use, accept the license agreement, update the system software. So this initially downloads it, it then prepares the console for the update to be installed and restarts. Once restarted the console begins installing the update and then restarts again. You can then take the controller, press the PS logo and either create a new account or sign in with an existing account. I'll sign in with my existing account using my mobile by scanning in the QR code on the screen. Once signed in you can secure your account, enable console sharing and offline play, transfer data from another console which I'll do later and that's it as simple as that to set up. As you can see you get presented with one game pre-installed which is Astro's Playroom and looking in settings, storage, you can see it still has the same amount of storage free which is 647.6 gigabytes which enables you to store a few games but it's definitely worth extending this with an M.2 SSD or you could use an external hard disk as a cheap alternative. I'll include links in the description below to videos showing how to set that up if you're planning to do that and just to note Spider-Man 2 will require a minimum of 98 gigabytes of storage. So the console itself is exactly the same as the original PS5 with the only difference being that you get the Spider-Man themed packaging, the Spider-Man plates on the console and the Spider-Man themed controller with a voucher code for the game which is being released on the 20th of October 2023. And just to note there's no digital version of the console just a disc edition. And personally I think it would have been nice if there were some additional features on the console like the LEDs being red or a different splash screen showing it's a limited edition. And it would have been nice Nice to even get a physical copy of the game like a steel book now that would have been great now if you didn't own a ps5 console and you were a spider-man fan then it's definitely worth getting this bundle as it's cheaper than buying a normal console with the plates controller and the game separately and as it's the same console all the existing accessories work for it plus you're able to still customize it and switch plates with the original playstation plates or even third party ones so just to show i have some plates from d brand here which are the smoke black plates. They also do customization for the lights and different center skins. Switching the plates is easy. Lay the console on a table and at the top back lift up the corner of the plate and pull downwards to remove. Then flipping over the console same thing again. Lift the top corner and pull down on the plate to remove. Take the replacement plate pushing into position until they lock. Repeat the same on the other side and that's it. As simple as that to replace the plates. To celebrate the launch of the new Spider-Man 2 game, I've created some wallpapers inspired by the game that are available on my Gumroad page. I've given a number of different wallpapers for both a mobile and computer, so be sure to check out the link in the description below to get your hands on it. So there you have it, you've come to the end of another video and I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in description below, including purchasing links. And if you have any questions on this, then let me know in the comments below. For those of you who got to the end of this video, please leave a comment with PS5 Spider-Man as it's nice to see who's got to the end of my video. And hopefully you guys enjoyed it. You can follow me on my socials. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to be notified on my next release. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one. One.